that you are. I thank you, Lord God, that you are so faithful, so loving, so kind, so understanding. And Lord God, I just ask the Holy Spirit to take control today. Take control of my mouth. Take control of everything that comes out of me. Lord God, I just desire that anything you want spoken shall come forth, no matter what I've prepared. Lord God, I just ask that the Holy Spirit have its way today. Lord God, open up our ears and our hearts and our minds to receive what it is that you're saying in this hour and to be obedient to do what it is that you called us to do. Lord God, I just thank you again for being the Savior of the universe. And I thank you again for your loving kindness towards us. Father, have your way today. In the name of Yeshua, I pray. Amen. 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 Now it's Haggai, actually. Haggai chapter 2, verse 6 through 9. For us. And the scripture reads, This is what the Lord Almighty says. In a little while, I will once more shake the heavens and the earth, the sea and the dry land. I will shake all nations, and what is desired by all nations will come, and I will fill this house with glory, said the Lord Almighty. The silver is mine, and the gold is mine, declares the Lord Almighty. The glory of this present house will be greater than the glory of the former house, says the Lord Almighty. And in this place, I will grant peace, declares the Lord Almighty. Please make note of that verse, of that scripture. Again, it's Haggai, chapter 2, 6 to, six to 9. That is to us this morning. So I'm just here this morning just to encourage you all that God is still on the throne. No matter what it looks like, no matter what it feels like, he still sees us and he knows us and he still has promises. And promises are the things that God says in his word to us. And sometimes we just have to go back to the word of God and begin to read his promises to us just to build our faith. Especially when you're in a weary season, especially when you're in a time of expectancy and you're waiting on the Lord, it's so important that you prepare yourself by reading his word. So I ask that you begin to read that word back to the Lord. Begin to speak his word back to him and it shall come to pass. Um, there's something to look forward to when we become saved and when we become to give, when we give our lives to the Father because we enter into a covenant with Him. And that is how sometimes we understand that once you enter into a covenant with God, then you begin to partake of the promises of God. And so I just want to read uh, Deuteronomy 7, 9 to you. And it says, Now therefore that the Lord thy God he is God, the faithful God, which keepeth covenant and mercy with them that love him and keep his commandments to a thousand generations. Now, it's sometimes we just have to go back and begin to break things down because we say things all the time. But a commandment is a divine rule. It's a rule to observe. And so the Father says, we have to keep his commandments up to a thousand generations, and that will allow his covenant to come forth. We know there's 613 commandments, and we know a lot of times we say, oh, I can't do this, or there's only one that I can do, but we have to rely on the Holy Spirit in guiding us into how to properly keep the commandments so that we can receive the promises of the Lord. Also partnered with that is obedience. Obedience is one of the keys to pleasing God. If you need anything from God, he always puts an act of obedience before you. And so if you are obedient to the Father and you're doing what he says do, then there's nothing that he will withhold from you. And so as I've always stated, you know, a lot of times we forget our position with the kingdom and our position with the Father, how much he loves us, how we are his children, and that there's nothing he will withhold from us. But the obedient part is something that you must pay close attention to. Now I want to talk to you quickly about what a covenant is. 
because we always say, I'm in covenant with God. And for some of us that, you know, even when you're witnessing to someone and you're saying, hey, I want you to give your life to, you know, to Yeshua, I want you to be saved, you have to take the time to explain to them that you are entering into a covenant with the Father when you give your life over to him. Now, a covenant is a sacred agreement between God and his children. God sets specific conditions and he promises to bless us as we obey these conditions. Making and keeping covenants qualifies us to receive the blessings God has promised. Now, this is like before I even was preparing for this message, I looked up what a covenant was, and that was the description of it. Making and keeping covenants qualifies us to receive the blessings of God. When we choose not to keep covenants, we cannot receive the blessings. Now, a covenant is also a relationship between two partners who make binding promises to one another to work together for a common goal. We have entered into covenant with the Father. So therefore, there are promises that we are entitled to, but we have to be obedient to obtain them. Now, as I started out today, the title of my subject today is what God was saying. He shall keep his promises to us. So if the Father is telling us this morning that he shall keep his promises with us, then there are some obedient actions that we must be already taking. However, we have to be aware of his promises so that when things are coming in our life and God is moving, we're not like, oh, I didn't know that was the father because we haven't paid attention to what he's already promised in his word. That's why it's so important to understand when you enter into covenant with the Lord that there are promises that he has given you as you walk in obedience. So there should be just an expectation with your walk with the Father. It sh I know we always say it's hard, and, and you know, it is a hard walk, but there's so many benefits of it. And the Lord wants us this morning just to remember that even though the situation may not look like it look, or may not look like you want it to look, He's still working, He's still performing His promises because you are in covenant with Him. And so I wanted to remind us there are five covenants in the Bible. The Universal Covenant, which is the Noahic Covenant, the Abrahamic Covenant, the Mosaic covenant, covenant, the Davidic Covenant, and the New Covenant. And so I ask that you take some time to go back and read about the different covenants. Read about what you are actually in with the Father. And then I think sometimes it would allow us to just be more comfortable and just be in a position to really serve the Lord. Um, for, for some reason now, as we notice, there is just a lot of wickedness in the world. There's a lot of backsliding in the world, and the, and the church is just wayward. However, a lot of times is that is because we don't know what we have partake and gotten involved in. We don't know that we're in true covenant with the Father. And so once you realize that, your decision making is different. Because not only does God tell you what he does as far as keeping his covenant and his promises, he also tells you what shall happen when you partake in disobedience. But I wanted to read Hebrews, um, I'm going to go ahead and go to Hebrews uh, chapter 8, verse 7 through 13. And I just wanted to read to you about the new covenant. And it reads, for if the first covenant had been faultless, there, sh there should no place have been sought for the second. For finding fault with them, he said, Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah, not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the days when I took them by the hand to lead them out of the land of Egypt, because they continue not in my covenant. And I regarded them not, saith the Lord. For this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, saith the Lord. I will put my laws into their mind and write them in their hearts, and I will be with them. And I will be to them a God, and they shall be to me a people. And they shall not teach, and they shall not teach every man his neighbor, and every man his brother, saying, Know the Lord, for all shall know me, from the least to the greatest. So I'm going to stop right there. So all of us shall know him 
from the least to the greatest. So we have to be in position with the Father that we are able to know him, share who he is, and have be able to pull in people. And so it's so important that you know your position. So this morning, as we know God is releasing promises, I want us to understand who we are in our position. Um, for I will, I'll read that again. For I will be merciful unto the, no, what was that? Okay, and they shall t not teach every man his neighbor and every man his brother, saying, Know the Lord, for all shall know me from the greatest to the least from the least to the greatest, for I will be merciful to their unrighteousness and their sins and their iniquities will I remember no more. And that he saith a new covenant, he hath made the first oath. Now that which decayeth and waxeth away is ready to vanish away. So again, our covenant with the Lord is so important and we must be mindful of that. I'm going to go to our Hebrews 10. 19 through 23, and it reads, Having therefore, brethren, boldness to enter into the holiest by the blood of Yeshua, by a new and living way, which he hath consecrated for us, through the veil, that is to say, his flesh, and having a high priest over the house of God, let us draw near with a true heart and full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. Let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering, for he is faithful that promised. And so today, there's a promise that the Lord has for you. There's a promise that you've been seeking out for the Father to bring forth. And I just want you to be diligent in, in continuing to seek the Lord. But specifically for the house this morning, we are seeking the Father for where we're heading. We're seeking the Father for the direction that he's taking us to. And so I just encourage us to petition him for the promise. If the Lord is giving and releasing promises upon us, we must be in position to receive them. And so um, I just ask that we understand our position mainly this morning. As God is saying, I'm going to release my promises to you. Basically, it is know your position with the Lord. Be in covenant with him. Understand what covenants are with the Lord. Understand that as you are in covenant with the Lord, there is a responsibility that you have to bring others into covenant with the Lord. And my final scripture today is from Philippians 4, 6 through 9. And it reads, Be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your request be made known unto God. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Yeshua HaMashiach. Finally, brethren, whatever things are true, whatever things are honest, whatever things are just, whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if they be of any virtue, and if there be any praise, think on these things. Those things which you have both learned and received and heard and seen in me do. And the God of peace shall be with you. Amen. So that's the message today is that the Lord is keeping his promises. Um, but there is an obedience that we have to walk out. And when we do not be obedient to the Father, he cannot bless us. And I wanted to share with us um, to be mindful of those that are believers and be mindful of the state that they're in. Because we shall, we shall be victorious in everything, but there is a position that we have to take. And so I just encourage us to seek after the promises of the Lord by reading the word, finding out the promises that God has said in his word he is going to give you. Understand your position. Understand what a covenant is. Understand what the commandments are and be obedient. And God will release his blessings. If you are in a position where you're stagnated, you're not growing, or there is no fulfillment in this walk with the Lord, then there's some self-examination that needs to take place. And then there's also sometimes you have to just go back to the word and say, Father, you said in your word that I should have joy, that I should have peace that I should have abundance, that I should have wealth. There are some things that we have to sometimes go after 
but it's about the life that we live. And so I don't want us to be uh, weary and well-doing, but understand that his promises shall be released upon this house. We have to petition him for them, stay in covenant with him, trust and believe in him, and he will do what he said he is going to do. Amen. Amen. Let's just close out in prayer this morning. Um, and I appreciate you guys for even allowing me to get up this morning last minute. Um, I just think it's so important at this hour that we don't get caught up in what it looked like. It looks like, but that we get caught up in where we're going with the Father as a community and individually. Um, it's so important that we examine ourselves and that we even ask the Father, how do I look to you? I think that is something that I've been doing lately and I think we all should do. How do I look to you, Lord? That's the most important thing in this hour. How do I look to you, God? And not what everybody else sees, and even not what everything else is going on, but how do I look to you? So if we could just stand up really quick today. Is there anyone in the house this morning that